Break out the Beyonce because the ancient Magus bride can be a sweet dream or a beautiful nightmare. Not just with its setting and premise, but with its narrative traits also. I say a beautiful nightmare because when the ancient Magus bride is at its high points, everything about the show is beautiful. The art style and backgrounds were already a given if you've seen the show or at least the trailers, but man it certainly makes me want to visit each location these scenes were based on. Each environment brings about its own special scene with the dragon's nest in Iceland having my favorite moment in which Chise accepts her new wand, and all the technical elements in the show brought together make some truly breathtaking experiences. This is a show that doesn't need quote unquote flashy animation for it to look great. The dynamic relationship between Chise and Elias is also beautiful, in that it's not a standard love story. Chise is property of Elias as she was sold into slavery, but the domination of one is not something that happens with their relationship. Through the many adventures they partake in, Chise and Elias help one another with the faults they have. Elias in a sense is not human whatsoever, and Chise is the bridge that keeps Elias from being a full-fledged monster, whereas Elias helps Chise with her overabundance of magic power and how to live in society properly. However, can Chise really be considered human as well? Through both the flashbacks and the three episode OVA series, Chise's childhood was definitely one that I wouldn't want to partake in. Being one of very few to be able to see all these creatures, both good and bad, certainly won't make you seem like any sort of sane individual, and because of this her mental makeup was shaken at its core. But then Elias comes in and shows her that she has a safe and happy place in the world after all. I guess it's kind of fitting to see a former monster help another quote unquote monster find their way back to normalcy, even if that monster isn't normal themselves, a beautiful nightmare. Even then though, Elias can't help Chise with her stubbornness or childish behavior as they both exhibit it in very similar ways, and it makes their relationship together interesting. The supporting cast is also able to grow because of Chise and Elias, and they aren't just cast off once their event has concluded. Elias and Chise still care about them, and they play an intricate role in moving the story along. And because of the slice of life aspect the show sometimes portrays, you are able to see how much they have progressed since their problems were solved. Now the other word of that phrase, nightmare. I know that this is a 100% exaggeration, but the ancient mage's bride can be a nightmare to sit through at points. The series moves at such a slow speed sometimes that you wonder when the next major event will happen. It's clever in what it does with some of the episode's endings in which they introduce you to the climax right at the last possible second, but the next episode makes that moment way less important than what was thought of earlier. From a weekly television broadcast standpoint, the ancient mage's bride excels at retaining audiences with surefire techniques, but from a binge perspective those techniques also amount to barely anything of value. The show can also be a nightmare if you hate the rinse and repeat method as its narrative flow follows the exact same path for each situation our cast partakes in. Elise and Chise go somewhere because of a major event, they partake in said event, whether it be good or bad. Chise and sometimes Elias overdoes things and they become injured, they sleep for many days then wake up and are told to be careful next time and repeat. It's not bad in that a lot of stories nowadays utilize this style, but it can become stale if you watch the series in bulk. I wish they also brought up the major flaw of the villain sooner rather than later. Cartophilius himself isn't a villain I would write home about, but the main theme and opposite perspective he gives the story is something I love. I appreciate the idea of having our main heroine be a character who is so fragile she can die at any moment, despite her not wanting to, while our main villain is unable to die despite him trying so hard to do so. Yes, he's absolutely a despicable human being in that he ruins so many lives, but I still feel sorry for him in that no matter how many years pass, he will never change and his time will never come. It's an endless pain that will take a toll on your psyche and I think the show does his character justice in that aspect. Speaking of our villain, holy cow, the final quarter of the series. I already loved the grim nature the series sometimes gave off and to have these episodes be all doom and gloom in some fashion was even more of a plus for me. The dragons are suddenly the reality we know them as, the pure nature of magic is now a curse. It's like all the beauties the series created are turned to nightmares. It fills your heart with love, then tears it out, much of the same way as Chise and Elias' relationship. But then it starts to find the bright spots of life and learning to accept things the way they are, while trying to still change things for the better. You know what other show did that? Full Metal Alchemist. And while I don't think it does it as well, the ancient mage's bride still makes it happen. The Ancient Mage's Bride captures what a mature fairy tale is known for, but it could definitely do more with how its story progresses. It's an absolutely beautiful show that certainly is worth your time despite the few problems it has, and it certainly has some memorable scenes thus far for 2018 in my opinion. If you are interested in checking out The Ancient Mage's Bride, you can watch the series over on Crunchyroll or Verve depending on your language preference. Now what are your thoughts on The Ancient Mage's Bride? Comment below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. Subscribe for more anime related content and follow me on Twitter, Kitsu, and my anime list if you're interested. I'm Kent from Spartan Media Reviews, and I will catch you guys in my next video.
Thank you for watching.